a quaint residential neighborhood in Florida, and a father who can't hold back his tears. Nothing will bring me peace as long as I live. From the moment it happened, I haven't been able to forget about it, even for a second. Barely containing his grief, Abdul Baikita Dashev takes a moment several times during our interview. A few days ago, he arrived in the U.S. from Russia to seek answers for his son Ibrahim's tragic death. This is the entrance into the condo where 27-year-old Ibrahim lived, minutes away from Disney World. It was here that on May 22nd, after reportedly being questioned by officials for hours, he was shot and killed by the FBI under circumstances, most of which remain murky. From reminiscing about Ibrahim as a child, who was very much into sports... Here he is at his school holiday party with his little brother. To looking through graphic images that a parent should never get to see, images that will haunt him for the rest of his life. Four or five shots right into the heart. I've never seen things like this, even in the movies, not in the U.S., not in Russia, nowhere. Such violence from law enforcement, nowhere have I seen anything like this. The morning father is on a mission to uncover the truth behind the FBI's killing of his son. He's even willing to sue. I want justice, honestly, because an unprecedented intentional murder of my son took place. Ibrahim came to the U.S. in 2008 to study English and ended up staying to pursue a career in martial arts. This spring he was questioned in connection with the triple homicide in Massachusetts as well as the Boston Marathon bombings, as officials believe the Chechen young man had been friends with the deceased suspect Tamerlan Tsarnaev. The father says the only connection his son had to the Tsarnaevs was a Chechen background that had once prompted them to exchange phone numbers. They said he was connected to the events in Boston. This and that they can't connect any dots now. If they wanted the truth, they wouldn't have killed him. They would have questioned him appropriately. Even if we were talking about a criminal, in this case, they took the law into their own hands. Ibrahim received multiple fatal gunshots to the heart and head during the night of the questioning. The FBI claimed a violent confrontation took place, but has been blocking autopsy results from going public. Some reports suggest Ibrahim was armed with a knife, others a broomstick, but there are also claims that he was not armed at all. Uh, Meanwhile, Abdul Bakita Dashev says his son had just had serious knee surgery and could barely move without crutches. Demands from the American Civil Liberties Union and the Council on American Islamic Relations for Florida authorities to hold an investigation were declined, while the FBI claims to be conducting an inquiry of its own. Now they would never be able to prove his guilt in anything because they killed him. If they kept him alive, tried him, that would be a whole different story. Showing us the postcards from Americans sending condolences to his family, Abdul Baki hopes those behind his son's killing would show some heart as well. Maybe the FBI will have some kind of guilt resurface and admit that they committed this fatal mistake. For several years prior to his death, Ibrahim was not able to leave the U.S. while waiting to be granted a green card. He eventually received permanent residence status and had plans to visit home on May 24th, but he died two days earlier. I'll never get tired. I'll do what I can. I'm just not able to leave this as is. While the father still has hope for justice, he will never be able to bring his son back or mend his own broken heart. Anastasia Cherkina, RT, Orlando, Florida.